Hey guys, Gary J here. Today we're looking at another Dan Wesson pistol and this is a very unique pistol set here. Uh, this was called the Pistol Pack. They came out in around 1975 and up. And I remember seeing one of these uh, Pistol Packs in the store and this is the original case and the original everything in a, probably a 1977 maybe uh, Pistol Pack of the Dan Wesson. And uh, these were very beautiful pistol sets, and they're very interesting to look at. Now here's what this looked like when we open it. And this is what you would have seen uh, with the Dan Weston pistol pack, except for these right here. Uh, the Dan Weston came with an 8-inch barrel a six inch barrel, a four inch barrel, and a two and a half inch barrel. And this was a 357 Magnum called the 15-2 series, the 15-2 uh, design. One thing I want to remind you is that Dan Wesson is not associated with Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson was created by Daniel B. Wesson and Horace Smith. So it was known as Smith & Wesson Company. About 100 years later, uh, Daniel B. Wesson, who was kin to Daniel Wesson of Smith & Wesson, uh, worked for Smith & Wesson for a number of years and decided to go in business for himself, and he created what was called the Dan Wesson series. Uh, he created uh, rifles, shotguns, and pistols. He's best known probably for his pistols today. Beautiful pistols. So... This being a 357 means that it'll shoot a 38 special too. So you have like two pistols in one. It'll shoot a 38, it'll shoot a 357 Magnum. So that's really neat about these particular pistols. Now, this is a baseline Dan Wesson pistol. Now, they had earlier versions of the Dan Wesson pistol. Some of them call them pork chop type barrels that went onto the frame. And they were not very pretty pistols to me, but um, he got it right when he stepped up to the 15-2 uh, in the 14 series. And just a, a look at this right here. If you've seen some of my other videos on Dan Wesson, you'll kind of know some of the things I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, aesthetically, this is a beautiful design here. I mean, it's just a beautiful pistol. Uh, you got ventilated ribs right here on this pistol. And uh, you've got kind of a flat black matted here, which keeps you from having glare when you shoot. And you've got a red sight here on the front sight. These sights here have a little hole right here where my finger is. And this little hole allows you to take off this sight. You unscrew it. You don't have to take the screw completely out. But unscrew it. This sight comes right off. And you have a choice of other sights over here. A white sight, a red sight, a yellow sight, and, and a silhouette or a steel sight. And I'll show you that. So, another thing about uh, Dan Wesson here, we see we have a latch in the front. Most all revolvers have a latch in the back. Since this is in the front, this is supposed to make this frame stronger because the cylinder goes in right here. You just pull down on this right here and this releases your cylinder. I didn't mention it in the beginning with, but all pistols are unloaded. So this is really the beauty of Dan Wesson. The barrel right here, this is the barrel cone, part of the barrel, that barrel screws in. One of the things that make Dan Wesson so accurate is that you're, you can screw that barrel all the way to the cylinder, and we use a shim to... Uh, put between the barrel and the cylinder. Now this is a six thousandths of an inch shim right here. And we can put that between the barrel here and check that. We can screw this barrel down and I'll show you how that works. So you have six thousandths of an inch. All other pistols have a certain gap right here. Problem with the gap right here, it decreases accuracy a little bit. It decreases power of the cartridge a little bit, 
because the bigger the gap is between the barrel cone, the end of the barrel, and the cylinder, a lot of your gases blow out each side right here. And so you lose a little bit of power. This way you have more power with the cartridges uh, with this kind of system here. So you have a stronger frame, it's stronger built, especially with the latch in the front. You have better accuracy, more power, because you have an adjustable barrel to the cylinder ratio. Uh, you have uh, sights here that you can change. The reason for the different colored sights is because depending on the time of day and the sunlight hitting the sights, you may have a better view. And if you're wearing different colored types of shooting glasses, some colors will pick up better than others. You also have a, an, an adjustable rear sight right here as well, which makes it really nice. And you got a little white outline here on your sight here, and you can see your red sight up front. Another thing about Dan Wesson, he had a presentational bluing on his pistols. You won't find anybody that had a better, beautiful bluing than Dan Wesson pistols have. That was one thing. Another thing is Dan Wesson was very careful to make sure that his pistols had a beautiful pistol grip. And this is zebra wood on this pistol grip here. And the pistol grips are attached here. There's a screw that goes in here that's very easy to take out. and only takes about 30 seconds to take this pistol grip off and put another one on it. And he had a coil spring in here. Uh, to operate uh, the pistol, unlike most of them have a flat spring down in here to operate the hammer and so forth. And it's got a fairly wide trigger here and a really nice hammer here that you can really grab a hold of very easily when you pull them back. So this is really just a unique pistol. It's even got a screw, usually in the back of them here, or on the side right here that limits the pull of your trigger, which also can help increase accuracy as well. So this is really a beautiful design pistol right here. And looking at the other side. So we have what's called a multi-tool. The multi-tool comes with a Dan Weston pistol set and it also comes with a patch, Dan Weston patch, and it also comes with a Dan Weston belt buckle. Now that's pretty good promotion there, isn't it? And it comes again with your four barrels, it comes with your sights right here that again you can interchange these sights out and they're pretty simple on the design here. And so that's another really neat thing about it. Now this multi-tool is very ingenious here. Take off these caps right here. And another thing too is that when you got the pistol pack, you had the Dan Weston pistol with the zebra grip and you had a combat grip came with this too. And just to show you real quick, taking your multi-tool, you can take off your zebra grip here very easily. Take the end of your short end, that's the Allen wrench basically. Put that in here. And see, your grip comes right off. And this is what it looks like. And that's got a coil spring system in here instead of the, the long flat spring. So, if you want to put your other grip on here, your combat grip, just slide that over and take the screw out of here and put that in here. And you've got a pistol. It looks totally different. That is really neat. And these are nice combat grips too.
Let me put this back on. Take our multi-tool. Place it in that screw. Just crank it down. Now this is really beautiful wood right here. Don't, don't screw it in too tight. You want it snug. So you've got your grip back on here. Now on the rear sight right here, on your multi-tool, you've got this kind of a small Allen wrench right here. And you can adjust your elevation here and you can adjust your windage here with this tool. And with this small end right here by my thumb, you can put that in here and unscrew this screw. You don't have to take it out, just unscrew it enough and this sight will just come out, put another one in and then screw it back in. That's how you change out your front sight. And that's how you adjust your rear sight for elevation and windage and how you take off your grip all with the multi-tool. But one of the most important things of the multi-tool is that it's got these notches on it right here, about my thumb, if we can get that into focus. Yeah, right by my finger is right here. The, the little notch here, there's a locking lug right here that you take this and just drop it in and just turn it until it drops. And then you turn that and you'll take off this locking lug and we'll show you what that looks like. Take your multi-tool, set that down, and this is your locking lug. This holds this shroud on to the frame. And perhaps you can see how the locking lug looks. It just screws over the barrel itself. Now that we've done that, keep your gun pointed up at an angle. If you turn it upside down, this piece right here will slide off and hit the floor. You don't want to do that. So gently pull this off. And this is called your shroud. Notice we look inside, see how it's hollow on the inside? And though it's hollow on the inside, right here is where that locking lug pushes against your shroud against the frame. Another thing too is right here is a little pinhole right in here. Okay, on your frame, you have a pin right here. This little pin goes in that pinhole so your shroud cannot rotate. And this is just your uh, plunger right here, or ejector. When you push this right here, your ejector comes out. So your ejector comes out like that. And now you have your barrel here. You're taking the shroud off. Now you have your barrel here. In order to take the barrel off, you just screw it with your hand real quickly. It only takes a minute to do this and this is your barrel this this uh, particular pistol pack I've got a couple of these is like brand new so now you have just your frame right here very simple this pistol's probably never had a box of shells shot in it completely. Now, let's say you want to put a, a four inch barrel on here. Well, what we would do is reach over here and grab our four inch barrel. And the barrel just slides out of the shroud. So this is a four inch shroud. Excuse me, this is a six inch shroud a six inch and you can see through that shroud right there and this has got a white sight on it and the beautiful ventilated rib right here 
in a flat matted right here so sunlight won't reflect and hurt your eyes or affect your aiming and so we're going to take the six inch barrel and we're going to put that on here and make sure you don't cross thread that and then turn that Now it has a lot of threads on it, which that's a good thing. That helps anchor that barrel. Now, let's see if we can see the gap. You see the gap right here. Now, as you screw this barrel in, you see the barrel coming through. We screw it all the way to the cylinder until it touches the cylinder. Okay, it touches the cylinder now. The cylinder will not turn if the barrel is touching that. So we back it out a little bit. Then we take our shim, and these come in like 10,000, 8,000, 6,000. Some people use a feeler gauge, but this one is at six thousandths of an inch on this one. Okay, so we put that between, I got my finger on the other end, that between the barrel and the cylinder, like this. Now we screw our barrel down on top of that very gently, again, very gently. We pull our shim out. It should come out very easily. If it's too tight, release it a little bit. Now we know that there's six thousandths of an inch gap right here between the barrel cone and the cylinder. So that's going to prevent a lot of your power gases from going out the side of your pistol, which is going to give more power to that cartridge itself. And it's going to help make it more accurate. Now we'll just take this bushing off right here. We'll take this bushing off right here. Okay, we put on our six inch barrel. Now we're going to take our shroud here. And as you can see, we can see through the shroud. We slide that over the barrel right here. And make sure it's flesh right here. Okay. So that's all the way on there. Now we take our bush in here. Place that on the end of the barrel. Make sure the prongs are open up here at the top. And just screw that by hand to begin with. And then we take our multi-tool, place here, and just rotate that around. Now when you're tightening this down, uh, I feel it snug. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure, not much. Do not put a depth grip on this. You just want that snug. So now we have our 6 inch, I mean, yeah, 6 inch barrel on here now. And our cylinder turns fine so this is the way you change out the barrel on this now just kind of recap this a little bit the barrel is anchored here where you screwed it into the frame the barrel is anchored here with that lock and lug supposedly it's supposed to make it a little bit more accurate because you've got the barrel locked in two different places here secondly you adjusted the cone of the barrel the, the end of the barrel to six thousandths of an inch from the cylinder itself. Therefore, it prevents a lot of the gases from escaping on both sides, giving more power to that particular cartridge. And in doing so, you have better accuracy. You have the adjustable sight, and you have your front sights that are easily to take off in just a few seconds. And you have your multi-tool, which does all of this for you. So it's very simple. So this makes it a very unique and wonderful pistol design. Now you may say, well, why would uh, you want a pistol that has four different barrels? Well, again, you, you have a pistol now that's a 357 Magnum, the frame here, 
and the barrels are all 357. So it will shoot a 38 Special 2. So you, you've got two pistols in one. Now, sometimes you may say, I want to conceal this pistol if you have a concealed license and whatnot. So then you can put on your small barrel here to conceal it, two and a half inch. You want to go hunting, well not hunting, you want to go fishing or something like that, you put on your four inch barrel. You might want to use snake shot or something like that. You want to go hunting, you put on your eight inch barrel. In Georgia you can shoot, you can kill deer with a 357 Magnum. And so you got the six inch barrel too you can use for hunting. You can use this pistol for target shooting. You can use it to shoot varmints, anything else, self-protection. It's just very versatile. So some people may look at it in one way saying, okay, I've got uh, these different barrels so I can use them like eight different pistols because you got four barrels, two different calibers, and it's like having eight pistols in one. Now, the reason that these probably were so popular, especially in the Europe, the European countries, you could only have two guns uh, in European countries. But here with the Dan Weston series, you can have this one pistol, the 357, which shoots the 38, and Dan Weston made a lot of other calibers. Some of my videos have those, which shoot more than one type of cartridge. So you had different barrels, and that gave them gave those people the opportunity to have a pistol that actually they had to put different barrels on. Dan Weston comes with the two and a half, four, six, eight inch barrel, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 15 inch barrel. I've got one video on the 15 inch barrel. So there's a lot of versatility in that. Okay guys, also I wanna say that this is a speed loader. For those who don't know what a speed loader is, um, this is basically one type of them. Uh, very inexpensive. And you can put your 38 and 357 magnums in here. I'd get the 357 magnum size. Uh, that way your 38s will fit in here too. Uh, but this part up here, you make just a little turn. And what happens then, it releases your cartridges. So they'll fall out. And once you have them pushed all the way back in, you just make a little turn. I mean, I'm not going but like this far to make that turn. So now they're locked in. This is 38 Special. Uh, this one here is 357 Magnum. So now the trajectory is different on the 38 versus 357. They're not going to shoot the same point of aim. Keep that in mind. So you would just open up your cylinder here. And you see your cylinder there. And just line your cartridges up with the hole right here. Okay. That's all you're doing. Line it up like that. Then make this one little turn right here. And your cartridges fall in. And then slam it shut. And you're ready to shoot. Okay. So that makes it real easy to do. And this is a great thing about Dan Wesson. You can see it's empty right there. And then you take your loader. You put your cartridges back in here. Now if you don't turn this, these will fall back out. See? So you turn this, just that little little bit, it locks them in. And now they won't fall out. And again, whether you got 357 or 38, whichever one you're going to be shooting, you need to know the point of impact on that particular one. Again, just line them up, turn it, and they all fall in. And you get good with that, you can do that in just a couple of seconds. Well, say five seconds or so. So, this makes it a really neat pistol right here, okay? The Dan Wesson 357 Model 
Well, guys, I hope this gives you some idea of the beauty and wonderment of Dan Wesson pistols and their versatility. These are indeed great pistols here. If you're looking for Dan Wesson, you can always go on probably Gun Broker or Guns America to find Dan Wesson pistols. They're not very cheap now, I'll tell you that, but they are wonderful pistols that will last you a lifetime and something you can hand down to your grandchildren. This pistol set here was probably made around 1975 or 1976, somewhere around there. This pistol set is probably about 36 to 38 years old and still looks immaculate. I have another pistol set uh, just like this one here also. And uh, most people generally take care of them. You know, if you have some money invested in your pistols like these, you generally take real good care of them. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Gary J.